Hey guys, here is the third review. So today I get the chance to review Nancy's um, portfolio. And there are, Nancy had some very specific questions. So I'm probably going to take some time to like review it and kind of go through it. And hopefully I answer all of, um, I hope I answer all of your questions, Nancy. But the first one was, does the portfolio homepage capture your attention enough that you would spend a bit more time going to case studies? And um, I've only skimmed through this and skimmed through the um, case study we're going to dive into. But like straight off, like the first thing that I thought when I opened up the um, portfolio was super clean, super easy. So that answer for me personally is an absolute yes. Um, a couple of reasons why it's a yes for me is I love this right here. Um, usually I, I mean, even till now my portfolio site is down, but even till now my portfolio site, I feel like I haven't done this right. Right. Like 95% of the time, it's very, very generic. Like I am a UX designer and I love creating, you know, great experiences and seamless UX for users, very generic, but this right here, it like really, really tells me what you're focused on, right? E-commerce. And yet you have a lot of experience um, understanding e-commerce. So if I am a, a e-commerce company, then yeah, I mean, driving double digit revenue growth in e-commerce, that's huge. So I love that. Um, another thing that, um, the, another reason why it's a yes is cause it's just super clean. Um, and I'm going to use the clean, like the word clean a lot, because I think it does go very far, especially when a recruiter is, you know, seeing like three to 400 portfolios when, uh, when a portfolio site is very, um, overwhelming and cluttered and busy, it just makes it that much harder to, to absorb any of the information. Um, so yeah, super clean. I love the images, it's crispy, it's clear, it looks professional. Um, I love the tags because I know exactly like what I'm looking at. I love context before I click into it. So right off the bat, I can see like, yeah, you have a lot of like SaaS and e-commerce experience. You know, it's, it's very good at targeting specific companies you want to work for. Um, visual hierarchy is amazing. The title, the spacing, the bolding, um, not using too many fonts, not using too many sizes, not using too many weight. It's great. And then I also love little call outs of what you did. I think it's, yeah, it really gives me like a really great snapshot. Cool. So then we're going to dive into, um, it's just something I always test out <laughs> is making sure all the links work. So that's the work that you're about. Testimonials. Cool. I like that contact. Yeah. Everything's got links. Okay. Oh, actually, that was your resume. Yeah, so the resume isn't working. But yeah, that's why I always like to kind of test it all out. Um, cool. So let's dive into case study. So Nancy wanted me to take a look at her um, self, self, Sophie, Sophie data dashboard case study. Um, like I said, I only skimmed through it just because um, I like skimming through it first and then sharing my initial thoughts so that it's a little bit like unbiased, I guess. So the first question was easy. Is it easy to scan? Second one is, is there anything that make the recruiter um, hiring manager immediately ban abandon reading? C, does the flow make sense? D, is there enough of an interesting story being told? E, any UI visual suggestions to make it more compelling? Okay. Okay. So let's start with A, is it easy to scan? So let me go through it real quick. Um, what Sophie's about, I love the spacing. It just makes it so easy to read project context, challenge, stakeholders, create a user-friendly dashboard. Okay. Project host versus Sophie's team leads solution. The new dashboard exceeds experience learning both by streamlining data access. Even, yeah, okay. I guess this is talking, yeah, it's talking about the product, your key contributions. 
Okay, testimonials, clarifying projects and requirements. Trying to solve by having, is this, oh, okay. What are specific decisions? What will look like for the dashboard? So what is this? Clarifying goals and requirements, okay. Aligning through project scope and plan. Uncovering user groups and aligning visions. Okay, um, in terms of scannability, it's not the most scannable case study, mainly because it has a lot of text. So unless I read everything, I don't really know like what's going on. Like the only thing I was able to say like, oh, here's that, it's this section. Because, uh, and you can see like, I didn't read any of these. I just read these four blocks in a very high level. And I was able to get like what the clarifying project goals were. Um, but yeah, and like here, I would have to read all of these paragraphs to understand what's going on. I was a little bit confused here. I'll dive into it just so I could understand it. But yeah, in terms of scannability, there's just a lot of a lot of text um, and there's other things that we can use or other ways that we can do things to make it more scannable. So for example, let's go to project content. So let's see, this was a four week interview. Sophie's a business intelligence. Okay. Um, now to go in that very, you know, direct, like reducing the copy, you can probably take this out because it's repetitive. We've already said that it was a four week. Um, they don't necessarily need to know that it's an internship. You know, it's a project, whether it's an internship, whether it's freelance, whether it's full time, um, whether it's a passion project or whatever, it really doesn't matter, right? Because at the end, what matters is the actual project itself, the actual like uncovering of problems and going through the process to get the best solution. So it doesn't matter what it is. So yeah, get rid of internship. Um, you've already mentioned that there's three other UX designers on a project. So all of this is a repetitive, so you can get rid of that. So now you're already left with a smaller chunk, right? Now it's Sophie's a business intelligent that provides software for healthy and safety management oil. That's all I need to know. Okay, cool. So that's what Sophie is. Um, And then maybe instead of, well, and then another thing is like, it's no longer like a project context. That's because, you know, we're taking this part out. So maybe like rewording the text, but yeah, so that's a very, very straightforward to kind of um, tackle the a lot of copy. The next step up or not the next step up, the, so that's a very, you know, straightforward, like, so that's an example of a very straightforward way to reduce copy because now it's you're literally literally physically making it shorter another way to do it is utilizing the headers and making it more descriptive so for example um let's take challenge as an example instead of saying challenge let's take a step back okay so when I'm scrolling down and I'm scanning and I'm skipping through it, in a very high level, I know that there's three things being communicated to me, project context, challenge, and stakeholders. And then I would have to read into each in order to understand what's going on. Now, if we change this title to be descriptive, then on a high level, I can understand what's like, what's going on. So for example, instead of saying challenge, we'll say, um, maybe in a smaller letter, you know, or like a gray or whatever, we put challenge and in a big, um, in a big header, like a big size, like this one, put create a user-friendly dashboard with clear data visualizations. So, Without me having to read an entire paragraph, 
now I know that the tasks or the challenge that was given to you guys was to create a user-friendly dashboard with clear data visualizations. And that I probably would be able to understand in like half a second, right? Because it's big, it's bold, it's the title. And then you would have a little paragraph underneath to further explain everything, for example, like these things right here. So that's, um, I'm not saying that's the only way, that's one of like the many different solutions that you know one can come up with on how to make it more scannable. Um, but yeah, utilizing uh, titles. Another way is to utilize visualizations. So visualizations, visualizations, I don't mean just in terms of like images and pictures and stuff like that. I also mean in like here, this is a great example. So this is a visual, um, a way to visually communicate the information. So if this was all in a paragraph, I would have to read through it to understand that, A, there's four different like questions being asked. Um, and also it would just get very, very wordy. Now, since here you separated, like visually separated for me, automatically and like instantaneously, my brain will say, oh, there's four questions being asked. And then because they're because the copy is broken up, it's a lot more enticing to read it versus this, especially after I went through, you know, it's been a long day. Maybe my cup of coffee was cold and horrible and I'm on like my 50th millionth portfolio that I have to review for that day. And out of the 50 million, like 40, like 95% of it is like super boring. And I'm already like bored out of my mind. And I feel like a zombie. Last thing I want is to read a text, like a, a blob of text. So if we like my, the way I see things is our job is to make it as easy as possible for the recruiters and the hiring managers to digest the information that we're trying to communicate um, through each sections, right? So that's why visually separating it out in four now makes it easy for me. Like it just reading smaller groups of text just becomes so much more enticing, right? Like, oh, okay, yeah, my brain's able to do this. My brain, I can't do this no longer next. So that's one way visual and visual could be um, the way you did it here, like sectioning it off. It could be um, like actual images like you used here, you know, prototypes. It could be icons. It could be, it could come in forms of anything. Um, if you look through like many other portfolio, um, I always have like a list of reference portfolios. If you look through them, you'll see a bunch of, you know, different examples and how others lay out their information. So there's like, um, sticky notes and charts and all that fun stuff. But yeah, there's a million ways to do that. So that's another way to make it more scannable. Um, another way is now sometimes we can't, we can't um, avoid a big text, right? Because that's sometimes the only way we can explain what's going on. So then within that, we can use bulletins. We can divide it. Um, and my first thing, we can shorten it. So let me see if I can find any example of how to do this. Actually, let's see here. Let's Let's keep concentrating on here. All right, so initially tasked with designing an internal dashboard, I recognize the importance of understanding the company and its specific needs and objectives to ensure our solution would meet their expectations. I collaborated with my team to prepare a list of targeted questions for kickoff. These questions are designed, okay. During the kickoff, we learned that Sophie centralized the dashboard would serve billing limited. Okay, so like, let's say, for example, I'm not saying this is the best um, way to handle this. This is just for pure example. So during the kickoff, we learned that, and if you put a little, um, what is that, this thing? Whatever name for that is. And then after that, you put um, bulletin number one, Sophie needs a centralized dashboard. Um, for information about the company's client. Bulletin number two, the dashboard would serve, you know, bulletin number three, this and this, bulletin number four. And again, it's the same concept of breaking up the text so that it's um, not as overwhelming and also just 
making it easier to scan. So there's bulletins that you can uh, utilize. There's also um, ways to, like a different way to visual, visually say things in, and this is very specific. For example, this is more useful for like showing um, like user testings and wireframes and stuff like that. For example, let's say this section is about wireframe and you're about to user test it, right? Instead of like typing out what you found, you can literally point to it and then write, uh, users found this confusing and point to it or, you know, before it was X, Y, Z, after X, Y, Z. So like literally pointing it out in the, in the pictures itself is also helpful. Um, there's, um, there's another way where visually we tell the story. So for example, here, like initially tasked with designing an internal data dashboard, I recognize the importance of understanding Sophie and the company, I collaborate with my team. These questions were designed to reveal information about the problem, dashboard aim and specific decisions and the criteria. So for example, um, I'm not saying this is any way the best way to say this. I'm just giving this as a pure example. Um, it might not work, you know, the best for this section or for this type of data, I'm not too sure, but let's, um, let's just flip all here for a second. So if my, so the story is right when you start, you're like, oh, actually I need to understand the company and it's, and it's need. Um, and then after that, you got together with your team, um, to come up with a question, a bunch of questions. And then these questions did X, Y, Z. So if I were to visually show it, maybe it's a, I don't know, a circle, a picture of like a girl illustrated, AKA you, I don't know. And then underneath it, underneath that little icon or that illustration, you'll write, uh, you could write, um, first uh, I realized, or I recognized I need to understand the company and then underneath that header. So that will be like bold or whatever underneath that you can write a little bit more specifics of like this. And then a little arrow going to the next one with, you know, multiple people. So a little group of people. And then in the big header, you'll write, um, my team and I prepared a list of questions for the, you know, whatever. And then underneath that header, you would kind of describe it a little bit. And then maybe like an arrow um, down here that says, you know, questions and blah, 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 and so forth. So, you know, well, you get the idea where it's like, I'm literally visually taking the reader through the story, right? With like, connecting the dots, like drawing arrows for them so that they can literally follow it. Step one, step two, step three, step four. So there's, that's one way. Again, I'm not saying like you should do that for this. It might, I don't think that would, I don't know. I don't think it really entails it. Um, but yeah, so that's another way. I'm sure there's, there's like a million, million different ways. Um, the best way to find it honestly is to go through a million others portfolio, whether it's, you know, senior, junior, entry level, and see how others are doing it. The best way to um, find those reference portfolio is, I mean, I did it through LinkedIn. And uh, there's a lot of recruiters that say like, oh, we're hiring for, you know, entry level role, like post, like post your, um, your, your portfolio and resume down in the comments below. And those usually have like two to 300 comments. And I literally sat down and I opened up every single one of them. And I looked through it. I looked through all of them. Several things came out of that. One is I really, really understood the um, competition and where the standard was. Right. Another thing is, um, you know, to this point is finding those really awesome, like portfolio, maybe it's the whole thing. Maybe it's a part of the homepage. Maybe it's one little thing in the case study that they did really good. Maybe it's the way they, um, communicated their wireframes and their user interviews, the way they highlighted, or they pointed out something or, you know, anything specific to that, to like an overall, like, wow, the color story is amazing or the overall feel, you know, anything, anything you, anything I liked from it, 
I saved it. And then so when I am making case studies and I'm like really struggling with like, you know, like how do I make this section like more scannable? So then I will go through my reference um, portfolios and see how others did it and kind of like adapt, uh, maybe pick out like, maybe I like the way three of them did it. And I picked out what I like from each one and kind of made my own, whatever it is. So yeah, reference portfolios are very, very, very helpful. Or I found it very helpful when it turn, when it comes to like how to communicate things in my case study in a very scannable way. So yeah, so that's all kind of the um, question A in terms of scannability. Let's see, question B, is there anything that make the recruiter hiring manager immediately abandon reading? I honestly, I don't think I can answer that because I have never hired someone. So I've never been in that, you know, on that um, position where I'm sitting behind the screen and looking through every one of these portfolio. Um, so yeah, I don't really have an answer to that. I think if I were to hire someone and sit down, I think in the very beginning, I would have more patience and I would read a little bit more into things. Um, but I think the more I do it, the more you know portfolios I read, I would have less patience and I would probably say like, okay, I can't read through this. I don't know what's going on. And I, 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 I might pass again, like that's a speculation. I don't know because I've never been in that situation. Um, I think once we go through other, other topics, maybe we can kind of uncover that a little bit. Um, so let's go to number three, does the flow make sense? Okay. So I read through it. There's a lot of cool things going on. I think one thing that stuck out to me was the way you told the story it was less about like i did user interview because i know it's the first thing of the process and then i did this because i know it's a second step it was more about you realize that you need to you know you needed to accomplish like in order to accomplish xyz you need more information on xyz and so therefore you did xyz so like there was reasons to the tools that you use I also like that you told a story following how the product was made, not necessarily by the um, design process, if that makes sense. So yeah, I, I like the story. I like how it's told. Um, I think the flow, yeah. So yeah, I think the flow makes a lot of sense. Um, it kind of goes hand in hand with Question D, is there enough of an interesting story being told? I think there's a lot of interesting going on in here. I think the things that happened in it are really cool and also are really important skills of a UX designer. So um, number one being you recognize that you need to understand um, specific needs and objectives to meet their expectations, right? You didn't go into this like, oh, I already kind of already have the solution. I know exactly what to do. No, you understood that you need to understand the problem and to dig in for it. And that's that's, that's really, really, really big. Um, another thing is the, what is the, what's the word I'm looking for? The planning, like every part of it was planned. Like you don't go into the call and be like, oh, hey, okay, what should we talk about? And then after the call, you're like, yeah, well, I should have asked this. No, like everything was pre-planned, which is awesome. Um, another thing that's cool is you realize that you do need to dig in to really understand the root of the problem, which again, like I'm going to emphasize, like that's a really big part of a UX, like how I'm um, a success in UX designer is to understand that you need to understand the problem um, the core problem to be able to come up with the best solution. Um, so with that understanding, you needed to interview your users. But what I think is really, really um, interesting and also very important as a UX designer is the fact that the project manager did not see um, why that's important, didn't see any value of user interviews. And so you had to pretty much um, persuade 
not, I, I don't like the word persuade, but help them understand why it's important to you. And that is a very, very like, you know, especially like being new to UX design. And um, that's something that I learned through my current job is that that is a really important part of a UX designer. So that's awesome. Um, another thing is that I like the planning, like the card sorting and like why you did the card sorting. Um, and overall, like the reasoning behind why you guys did X, Y, Z, um, I think is really important too, right? Cause it wasn't just like, yeah, I just made charts because we thought it belonged there. No, it's because through your, um, user interview and the card sorting, you found that X, Y, Z is more important than X, Y, Z and so on and so forth. Um, I also think like this is a really big part. Like you don't really have like a flushed out design system to work with. So you guys um, pretty much kind of created a little bit of like standardization across the UI and design system to create the prototype and stuff like that. Also knowing that like you needed to do that in order for the product to look and feel cohesive. Um, and then the impact is always very, very, very important. So yeah, I think there is a lot of like things going on here. So that's answer, that's a short answer to answer um, to question number D, which is, you know, is there enough of an interesting story? And then the last one is any UI visual suggestions to make it more compelling and presentable. Um, so the long answer to make to, to the last three question, right? Does the flow make sense? Is it interesting story and any, you know, UI visualization, visual suggestion? Overall, I think the lack of scannability makes it hard to understand the story because, um, you know, I, I think I took like 12, I don't know how long, was it like 12 minutes? I don't know, to read everything. And then I understood everything and chances are, the recruiters are probably not going to get to that point ever because they just don't have the time to read through every single thing. So yes, a lack of scannability um, is, a, is a really big thing. Another thing is there is a, I guess it's, yeah, this is going into like visual hierarchy or more like groupings of things um, that makes it difficult to know what belongs to what. Uh, so for example, Like it's just a, a use of spacing. So here, it because there's a huge space here, it looks like these are two separate things, but they're kind of not. They're like kind of one one story. Uh, and so when you scroll down, there's a huge spacing between here and there, but they're slightly different, but they're really, really big. So I can guess that that is a header for these, for this section. But again, it's not like, you know, it's it's a safe assumption I can make on my end, but it's not 100% super clear. So if you reduce the spacing a little bit, then I can tell like, oh, then my brain would be like, all right, so that's a that's one section. All right, this is a new section that goes together. And then this kind of feels like a complete separate section, which I think it's not. Um, it looks like it's the same section. See, there's a little bit of like spacing that can be um, improved on. Like here, it looks like because there's such big spaces and I love big spaces. My point is not to have, not to reduce all the spaces, more like it's two big spaces, but between here and here are the same it looks like this is just a standalone, right? It's not grouped with anything. But if that is a header to these sections, then if you make the spacing, let's say like here, maybe this paragraph starts here, then now the brain will group this and then it will group that. So yeah, use, using the spacings. Um, another thing is, Again, it does go back to like scannability. The images 
I have a hard time knowing what the images are about unless I read. So like if I were just to skim, and skim real quick, I'll see, okay, uh, that's a card sorting activity. Okay, so they did card sorting. Um, card sorting? And then, okay, these are the wireframes. And then these are filters. Yeah, okay, filters. So like I would kind of have to guess what things are. That has, you know, that goes into a little bit of um, figuring out how to make it more, it really comes down to like scannability. So to go a little bit more detail into that is, um, let's see here. And Again, I'm going to, I say this every single time, take everything I say with a grain of salt. What I like the next couple of things I'm going to talk about, like how to improve and what to take out and what to, you know, put in whatever. It's only a suggestion. You know, your case study best, you know, exactly what, you know, you want to communicate and what you don't want to communicate. So, um, yeah, take whatever I say with a grain of salt. And just because I suggest something doesn't mean like that's the best way. It just means that's one of the many billion and millions of different solutions um, and that just happens to be the first thing that comes up to my mind, right? Um, okay, so let's say this little section. You say overcoming, well, actually, let's start from here. Okay, so aligning through project scope and plan. So following the kickoff meeting, our, me our team's next move was to produce a project plan. Um, Sydney provided the team with the list of requirements. However, upon review and consultation, we lacked a deeper understanding and how they be used. And then these were the deliverables and the tasks. Overcoming resistance, Allison. Okay, this is where. I did that. Okay, so this is where you kind of showed it. Okay. Um, first thing is reducing this section. I think we can reduce it quite a bit and really like fo focus on the story. So there's a lot going here. One, you're telling the story of how they gave you the tasks and deliverables and you were like, hold up, I need X, Y, Z more. I'm going to interview users and Sydney or I think, or Allison. Yeah. Allison was like, eh, you know, we don't need it. And you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to, instead of just telling her, I'm going to show her the plan. And then yippee, we were able to, um, go through with the user interview, right? That's the whole thing. Now, that's the first thing you're trying to communicate. The second thing that's hap that's I'm seeing is like now you're also showing like the deliverables and the tasks that she's that she provided, and then you're showing the actual like card sorting. Um, and then also you are trying to kind of break the story down. So there's a lot of things going on here. So I think we could really clean it up. The first thing that comes up to mind is how to make this more scannable. So let's see, following the kickoff, um, maybe we could even start with the title, right? It's let's sum up this entire thing. So what can we, how can we sum this entire thing into one sentence to use it as, as a header where the recruiter doesn't have to read any of this to understand what this entire section is about. And that's a challenge, but I think it will be a very highly successful solution. So we can say, I don't know, what is the number thing we're trying to communicate? So is it about like, is it more about understanding why like understanding the user and having a, being able to talk to them directly. Is that the main point or is the main point about you pushing back and saying, no, this is important. I don't know what would be like the main thing you want to communicate here, but like figuring that out will help you with your titles. I'm thinking maybe um, it's a, a hybrid between 
understanding the importance of talking to directly to the users and also having to push back and educating the project manager of why this is important. So maybe the title can reflect both of that. So um, it could be I don't know. I don't know. Recognizing or recognizing we needed a deeper understanding of the core problem by talking directly to the user. I don't know, whatever it is. So then when the recruiter reads just that title, she understands like, oh, wow. Okay. So they understand the importance of um, understanding the core problem, understanding the user, the user centered, you know, all that fun stuff. I think that more successfully summarizes this entire section than talking about project scope and plan. So that's number one. So that's the title, right? Um, and then let's move into this little section. So yeah, I mean, like this part is like really, it is really important. So how do we make it more scannable and really tell the story? Um, okay, so our team thinks we will produce a project plan to ensure and our team have a shared and center of project resources resulting in a more focus and outcome. Um, maybe all of this can turn into a subtitle, right? This is like a really big header that's for the entire section, but for just for this section, maybe the sub, the sub header could be, um, understanding, no, the, maybe the subheader could be, project um produce a project plan to have a shared understanding of objectives constraints and resources right that's a subheader right so it's smaller it could be gray it could be whatever um but yeah make it a subheader and then underneath that the body would be something like this right so um yeah, so here, let's say our team was given a list of requ um, a list of requirement. Right. This yeah, this entire sentence could be pared down to our team was given a list of requirements. However, upon review, leave out consultation with our mentors. It really doesn't doesn't really mean anything. Um, upon review we still lacked a deeper understanding of the data points important to dashboard users. So maybe it could be, however, so our team was given, requ uh, given a list of requirements. However, upon review, we still lacked a deeper understanding of the data's importance to, dash to users, right? just to users take out dashboard. Uh, let's see how they will be used for making business decisions, how they should be. Maybe this could be in another section. Maybe it could be like a, 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 a space, right? So the next one, it says, you know, the, to again to make to split the information to make it more scannable it would, we can write a space so there's a little space here and then enter and you say things we still were unclear of or you know we still needed a clear understanding of you know, dot dot whatever the name of that is space bulletin how they will be used for making business decisions enter bulletin how they should be presented for viewing analysis, enter bulletin, bridge the gap. Oh, never mind. Okay, that's it. Yeah, two, two, three bulletin. Okay, and then, um, and then maybe enter, and then you can say to bridge this gap, we added user interviews to our plan. Um, in terms of this, I honestly don't think you need a graph. Like I don't, 
I don't need to see this in order to understand what's going on. If anything, this confused me even more because I was like, oh, is this something that I need to read in order to understand the story? So I read into this and I was like, I don't even know what any of this means. Like, it, it means nothing. It means nothing to me, right? Um, so I would personally just take that out. Um, okay, cool. So then you have, you know, to bridge this gap, we added user interviews to our plan. And then maybe the subheader again would be, um, like, yeah, I mean, this is a good subheader. Like I know without reading this, I know what it'll be about just through this overcoming resistance, like educating stakeholders. Um, yeah, this is personal. I think overcoming resistance can be, there could be a better way to phrase that. It sounds like resistance is a pretty strong word. So educating. So yeah, so now you got like a subheader here that we talked about this body that we just finished up and then a subheader of overcoming resistance. And then you can talk about, um, despite me explaining the importance of speaking to you, maybe you can talk about all of this. Okay. So hold on. I'm going to put this together to see how it kind of looks. Give me one sec. So there's your big header I was talking about. Then let's make that subheader we were saying. Okay, so let's say that was your subheader. I definitely could be shortened. So that gets rid of this. What is the body is going to be about? Have her upon. Okay, what about it's like more? Of, it's about more about refining refining the project plan. So then that's kind of a subheader. Our team was given requirements. However, upon review, we still lacked a deeper understanding of the data. Um, we were still unclear of, or maybe it's more like we needed a deeper understanding of how they will be used, how they should be presented. And then so maybe we decided a we decided um, card sorting with card sorting, I don't know, um, activity with with the users will help us understand. Okay. Originally, I was thinking, you know, maybe this could be the second header. I could say uh, I mean, you can leave the name. You don't have to. I'm I'm just removing it because whatever it takes to shorten it, right? Allison means less to to someone else than the project manager. Um, obviously, it's from Sophie, the project manager. Um, I mean, this is exactly what's like. You're telling this to the story that it's it's initially resisted, so you don't really need that. So the product manager believed the requirements of the provided by our team was sufficient. Um, despite my explaining the importance of speaking to end users before designing, Allison remained unconvinced. So it's obvious that Allison is the project manager. Cool. 
Um, eventually, she feared that the interview was... I mean, I like this part. Just the fact that you uncovered what her true concerns were and then addressed it to this. I love it. Um, let's figure out a another way to tell the story. So it's not eventually. You didn't eventually do it. You purposely, tactfully identified concerns, right? I guess instead of, um, you know, eventually, I wanted to highlight that in order for you to push back and go through with the user interview, you had the best way that you thought of was to understand and identify concerns. And I think that all of that is very important and it's not coming through with the word eventually. That's that's why I'm trying to figure out what that is. But I'm going to leave it eventually just for time wise. But I would um, think of another word or another thing to say that you fleshed out a user interview plan. Okay, so actually, I'm going to change up here. Um, we decided the user interview, right? Because at that point, you didn't flush it out. So user interview will help us. Or we decided um, talking directly with the users will help us understand. Okay, so from here, so you fleshed out the user interview plan with a moderate as a main activity. Um, and then you pre presented the plan to Allison, um, highlighting what the, what you will accomplish, what, what you can accomplish with it and that it will only take 30 to 40 minutes. Okay, and by showing rather than telling. Okay. Um, also to go back, I don't think you need to show this. Um, everyone knows what a card sorting is, right? Well, I mean, you know, not, I won't say everyone, but the recruiters and the hiring manager knows what it looks like. Um, it makes a section long. And honestly, just like without having, without reading all of this, I got a little bit um, confused. I was like, okay, there's car sortings. And I scrolled down. I'm like, there's more car sortings. I was like, oh, okay. I guess she's showing me. There's a lot of back and forth. And personally, I don't think it's ne unnecessary. Um, so yeah, if we remove all of that, oops, then you're kind of left with this, right? This already makes this entire section, like from here, all the way to here, we've already, we've shortened it to this one section. The next step is, it's a lot of copy. And if you want to figure out how to make it even more scannable. That would be the next step. But I think right here is already an Im improvement in terms of um, storytelling, um, using headers and subheaders. Again, like visually, my subheaders aren't sticking out, but you know, you could change, like you'd be using different font and all that stuff. I'm not gonna spend too much time. So it's scannable because then the idea is, okay, she sees, um, oh yeah, changing the main thing to, the idea, wherever you get to, if you know, if you even go this route, like I said, I'm gonna say like a million times until everyone gets sick of it. These examples are just an example of one of the many solutions, right? So if you're gonna go with the solution, the idea here is to make it super scannable. Yes, there's a lot of copy, but the idea is with the big, big header, the recruiter or the hiring manager will now understand what all of this is about without really quite having to read it, right? So if a recruiter scrolls down and she goes, okay, recognizing we needed deeper understanding of 
uh, users' needs. Right off the bat, she can gather that you are user-centered, you do think about your users, you know that it's important to understand deeply like what the user's needs are, right? And she can skip through the next one. Or if they want to dig in a little bit more with these, uh, my horrible visual hierarchy subheaders, if she reads us two subheaders, then she can already gather the story, right? So just by reading, refining the project plan so that our team has a shared understanding of the project's objectives, constraints, and resources. Key word being refining, right? So they're refining now with that, she'll say, oh, okay, so they got the project plan and they're refining and they're changing it to make sure that it's the most optimal. All right, she doesn't even have to read through all of this. Yeah, so here she would be overcoming, you know, resistance, educating stakeholders. So that's, I think it's a great title. So the recorder doesn't have to read the rest of this to understand that you guys had to push back and educate stakeholders on the importance of user interviews. Uh, this also states that you succeeded. So yeah, so then the, the idea is that they don't have to read all of this to understand the story of this section. But you also give them the options if they want to to dig deeper into the details and read this and to really understand it, right? It's it's an option. Another section that I can take a look at real quick, um, cause I'm gonna wrap this up soon is, I think in this section you did great cause you boxed it in so I can see like, okay, that is, you know, your selector. And I think that could apply, that could be applied to something like this. Like it's, it's feeling all over the place. Like it's not aligned at the top at all. It's, you know, this is bigger, that's, smaller xyz so it's looking a little bit messy so maybe if you box it in align this to the top make sure that all of these boxes are the same size i think that would make this little section clearer um and then here i know it's a web browser but you know again if you put a little box here to define like that's the desktop size right i think that would make it look cleaner versus like right here it's like because there's no clear definition of where the desktop screen ends or starts, it's like floating, floating things. Um, so yeah, little, little visual things like to clean up here and there. Um, and then just to wrap things up, a couple of my thoughts that I had, it's not part of like your initial questions, but number one is, this is timeline. Uh, tools is great. Teammates, I would, instead of putting their names, put um, like three other UX designers or whatever and show like, you know, show their position because when I'm a, like, okay, Caitlin King, like that means nothing to me. What does she do? Is she an engineer? Is she a product manager? Is she a PMM? Is she another UX designer? Is she a UI designer? I have no idea. So showing um, the role of them is is more is it means more than just the name. Um, uh, let's see. Another thing. I mean, okay. So this is very personal, personal preference. But I always shy from shedding a light on like internships or like you know smaller like projects or like mentors or, you know, springboards or school or stuff like that, right? We've already had that as a disadvantage. We don't need to shed a light. So just take out industry, just put, this is a four week project. Cool. I mean, I, you know, originally I suggested to remove all of this cause you already said this all, but if you were to keep it, you know, take out internships, take out mentors, take out springboard, take out capstone project, all of that. So another thing that came to mind was um, this whole, section here um i think i understand the purpose of it so here the purpose is to show like the final solutions right and then here is the contributions because it was a team so really highlighting like what you did versus what other people uh, other others did and then a client testimonials to kind of like show yeah like a testimonial to you about you in this specific project and then it starts i just think it's very long it's a very long lead up to actually reading about the project about you know what the case study is about um this right here 
it's totally up to you whether you want to put your prototype, your final finished prototype in the top or not. Um, I did. A lot of people don't. Some people are for it. Some people are completely against it. Personal preference. But I don't think that it's necessary to put in three screens of it so early on. Especially like, like right he, like at this point, we don't know anything about this project, right? All we know is that you had to design a dashboard, but we have zero clue about it. So really going into details of what the solution is doesn't really mean anything. I, the, if you wanted to put the prototype here, I think the purpose of it was just to give a high level snapshot of what the final product looks like so that they have context into it when they're reading the when, it, when they're reading about it right and with that purpose in mind one snapshot of this and like maybe just highlighting a couple of the features maybe it's you know it's to make it less scrolly and more short maybe you can make this just a little bit smaller and on the side you could bulletin um you know filters and date selectors and then you can bulletin like data points are organized into vertical and horizontal or you know navigation is vertical and horizontal um and then you know kind of like put all of this into that one bulletin in the side and then only have one prototype. Because now you're you're um, showing, what is it? You're pointing out all of these and at the same time, you're just giving them a high level snapshot of what the project kind of looks like. And it's all in one screen. So that already shortens it by two scrolls. Key contributions. Um, I, yes, it's very important to point out what you did versus what others did. I think that this can be sprinkled in throughout the case study. Like communication lead, you already wrote it on the top. Communication lead. Um, you know, you could sprinkle this in this section right here. You already talked about this in that section. You can make it, you can word it so that it's communicated that you gained the buy-in, right? You're the one that initiated all of this, not the other designers. Um, Again, you can sprinkle this. So like, all of this you can sprinkle throughout without making the entire section of it. Um, making it shorter by now by like three scrolls. And then testimonials. Uh, it's interesting because when I was doing it, I didn't see a lot of testimonials. It's something that I'm like seeing recently. Um, it's cool. I just don't think it really belongs here because my thing is like, I just want to get to the actual project. Testimonials can go down here, right? After you talked about the project, after you talked about the impacts, then you can talk about like what you learned and then you can talk about your testimonials. The reason why I am thinking this um, is because I just want them to get to my case study quick, as, as, as quick as possible, because this right here, this is gonna give them the most value. This is going to really drive or communicate why they should consider you for the position, right? Testimonial is kind of like a a cherry on the top. That's that's why I don't think it belongs in the top here. So now if you got rid of this, right, if you trinkled, if you sprinkle all of this in so that they can still gather that these were your key contribution, but you don't make a section of it, you put this in the bottom and then this becomes one. Now your case study is literally like right there. So after this, now you start your story and boom, there it is. I think that'll be a lot more successful than like a long scroll down to um, starting like the story. But um, but yeah, that's um, all of my opinions about this review. I hope it is, you know, even a part of it is very helpful. And again, if anybody has any questions, um, you could always reach out to me in LinkedIn. If I don't answer you even within the week, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's probably because um, I'm busy and I just didn't get to it. So thank you so much. And thank you for allowing me to review your um, portfolio. It was really fun and I really enjoyed it.
拜拜。